We can make it worth 10 then. Okay, so uh, four minutes. And then we'll start. Okay, so we're going to start. We're going to continue from where we ended yesterday. And then today we're going to do um, uh, an exercise or two. Yeah, so we're going to do um, two exercises and then we'll call it a day. So we'll start from where we ended. I believe we ended uh, from here. Am I correct? Uh, yes. Okay. So uh, we ended. I ended from here. So uh, just the petit rappel. We talked about uh, Coulomb's law and uh, what's about, and we talked. And I think uh, just a correction. I think I um, said something about a particle producing force. So it's not the particle that uh, produces the force. So we have uh, the char a charged particle produces an electric field in all direction. Then this field produces a force that is that is either directed away or towards the original particle. Did we catch that? So uh, the charged particle produces an electric field that uh, uh, produces a force that is either directed away or towards the original particle. So yeah, so today we're going to continue from where we ended from. Uh, and that was, uh, we're talking about um, Asha, which is electric field. Uh, so we talked about distribution of limit the charge. Uh, we talked about electric field created by distribution, a continuous distribution of charges. Uh, we discussed and uh, we, uh, ended uh, up to here where we talked about uh, the uh, Sha, and then we talked about uh, the integration due to uh, the volume. So we're finding Sha at this specified volume of a surface, so to say. So we have this as our final expression in that we have our E. Our E originally, we discussed uh, it was equals to um, it was equals to uh, E is equals to one over four pi epsilon naught uh, Q R squared U. 
And then um, this was our E uh, with uh, respect to uh, the integral, the uh, volume, the integral representation, the volume showing that we are integrating with respect to volume. So we have this. And then here we're supposed to have dq, but since we changed the subject of formula, we have rho dv over r squared du. Uh, and then this is where we ended from. So I hope we're all on the same page. Yeah, so today we're going to start uh, from Champ Electric, Sha Electric, created by a distribution continuous of charges, distribution surface seek the charge. So the previous one, the distribution volumic the charge. And then now we're talking about uh, distribution, distribution um, surface the charge. So the same thing we already talked about. Uh, when you see two integral, uh, that's uh, an illustration that now we are integrating surface area. So if you see three, it's trying to tell us that we're integrating volume. If you see two, we're integrating surface area. So we're going to have the same equation DE because we have DQ here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we are going to have the E because we have the Q here, and then we'll have uh, our equation of the E, which uh, is going to be equals to. So we already discussed what our uh, distribution, our density charge in distribution surface is. We said it's, it's, it's this guy here. This is a Greek uh, letter. Uh, yeah, it's a Greek letter. So we have this guy here. Um, ds, oh, this guy is equals to dq over ds. So when we change the subject of formula, where there's dq here, sorry, where there's dq here, uh, we replace with uh, the constant ds in the direction of u. So there's nothing um, major that has happened. We've just replaced with uh, dq because we're dealing with distribution surface the charge. So dq we replace with uh, the, uh, the Greek uh, uh, letter, um, yeah, this uh, times ds, because our actual equation is this guy is equals to dq over ds. So we change the subject formula and then we have that. And then this is just a uh, representation of uh, how we get the, um, the sham. So this is what we have here. So if we want to find, this is the e. So if we want to find e, we have to integrate the e which is what we've done here. But because uh, it's uh, we're integrating uh, with respect to the surface area, we're going to have two uh, representations showing them that we're uh, integrating with respect to the surface area. So we're going to have uh, two integrals and this uh, in the u direction. And then c, we're going to have distribution in a decharge. Uh, same, uh, the same, um, the same reasoning, so to say. So we have DE at a specific uh, point in a line. So imagine this is a wire. Then we're trying to find uh, the sharp produced by charge that is placed at the point A of the wire. So we're going to have DE, a petit, uh, petit uh, sharp. We're going to have DQ here. But since uh, we know what DQ is equal to, if we change the subject form, we're going to have this, another Greek constant. Uh, times dl over r squared in the direction of u. And then since we inter integrate, oh, now for us to have e, we have to integrate the e. But since we are integrating with respect to uh, lin a line, linear x, so to say, so we have only one integral and uh, we have this going on here. So, um, yeah, so we move on to um, talk about we move on uh this was we move on to uh sorry 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 so we move on we move on to flux we so i'm sure most of us have heard about flux i think we did it in physics so uh flux is uh electric flux is uh the rate of flow of electric field through a given area so electric electric flux is the rate of flow of electric field through a given area so electric flux is proportional to the number of electric field lines going through a virtual surface. So electric flux is simply if we have a surface, whether it being uh, okay, we have a surface, the uh, 
uh, the rate of flow of the electric field through a given area of the surface is what we call uh, flux. So we have uh, flux du champ électrique definition. So this was uh, just a pretty definition to help us get an idea. So we have soit une surface S située dans uh, un champ, uh, et soit et le champ and N point P, the S autour de P, considerant an element, the surface there, the S, so which is what um, we have here. Uh, we have uh, a surface. This is uh, a surface, the square representing the surface. And then we've got a petit, uh, what can I call it? A petit surface, a petit portion of the surface area, so to say. And then we know that uh, here we have a, a charge and uh, was uh, for us to get the flux, so to say, so we have, uh, uh, we've seen the vector ADS and uh, we've seen our Sha. So Sha is always moving outwards a surface. That you must, uh, you must know that uh, Sha is always moving outwards. Because uh, we've said uh, flux is electric field passing through a a specified area. So we have uh, our sh our sham uh, can be coming in this direction, in this direction, in this direction, in this direction, as long as it's passing through a surface. Uh, yeah, so it's the rate of flow of electric field through a surface, that's flux. So we have, uh, that's why we have our E coming out of the surface like that. And then uh, the, the surface air will be in the direction normal to the surface of the element. This is why we have the DS uh, vector here. So we have the surface and then for us to have um, the vector direction ds. The vector direction ds will be uh, in the direction normal. It will be normal to the surface of the element. That's why we have it here. So I mean, in here it forms 90 degrees to the surface, 90 degrees to the surface, a normal. A normal is a straight line that uh, cuts a certain surface at 90 degrees, so to say. So it to have 90 and 90 inside. So uh, yeah, this is what I have. So let me just... Uh, Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Mm. Okay. There's really, okay, so we have that. Uh, yeah, we have this, uh, and then um, just do it. Just. So yeah, so we can have, uh, Sha coming in in this direction from the charge, obviously, from the charge. So we can have E coming in that direction. Because uh, you said electric flux is the rate flow of electric field through the surface. So we can have E in this direction, in this direction, in this direction. Uh, but uh, we also have to consider the direction of uh, uh, the surface, uh, the um, surface. So the direction of the surface when to have a vector ds, it's always uh, as a normal to the surface, so which is what we have here. So ds, the surface area will be in the direction normal to the surface of the element. So normal here will have uh, ds in this direction. So an appel uh, flu uh, flux, uh, flux elementaire de champ à travers ds le produit scalaire. So we have a for uh, flux or flux in French, so flu. Uh, we'll have D this. So just by seeing DE, so we know that this guy here is the uh, symbol that we use for flux. Yes, so we have uh, uh, this guy here is equals to EDS. So in this case, we have, so this guy is flux, the, this, um, um, what can I say? This, um, guy here is used to represent is used as a representation for flux so we have the uh the same uh representation is equals to eds so we have d because of the uh ds here so if we had s we had e the sha times s it would have just been um uh, uh, this guy without a d so uh this uh expression is gotten from if we have so we have uh, this uh, ch uh, change in flux is equals to eds which is also equals to eds cos alpha so you might be asking how uh we have two expressions so if the sha if at any point we have uh, uh electric field passing through along the s 
if we have a uh, sham passing along ds, we will not have an angle. So an angle, the angle will be at uh, zero. So if we replace where there's cos alpha here, we put zero, we'll just have cos zero, I believe is one. So we'll just have uh, e ds. But if uh, the sha is moving in any, it's not moving along the um, normal, which we've established in the direction ds, we can have sha moving in this direction as we have in this uh, drawing, it's moving in this direction. So this angle here between the normal that we've established and the uh, electric field is alpha. So flux is supposed to be equals to e ds times cos alpha, but Mm, if we have uh, electric field flowing along the ds, we'll have cos zero, which will just be equals to this. So we have a uh, change in flux is equals to eds, which is also equals to eds cos x, or oh, cos alpha, sorry. So um, are we... Can you just try to repeat um, on the same, on the, on the flux field? especially on the formula part uh, in reference to the diagram. Okay, so let me rub, let me try to rub. Um, so I said uh, flux is the rate of, uh, it's like the rate, we're calculating the rate of electric flux flowing through the surface at yes, a given area. So in this, uh, in this case, we have uh, DS and we have a charge at this point. So now we're trying to calculate the flux flowing through this uh, DS area. So I said, uh, if we will establish that uh, DS, we have to know that DS, the vector DS, uh, the surface area will be in the direction, uh, will be in the direction normal to the surface of the element. So we establish a, a normal, and we know that uh, the vector DS uh, is, uh, the surface area is, is in the direction normal to the surface of the element. So we established that this is our ds. And then we have, we can have a sha uh, flowing uh, in through this surface. Uh, it can be flowing in this direction, uh, but it's flowing outward. So we can have it flowing in this direction like this, we can have it flowing in this direction as well as we have established in the uh, diagram. So what I'm saying is that a flux is equals to E ds cos alpha. Then alpha is the angle between the ds, which is the normal, and the uh, vector electric field. So we have E, uh, this, so if, if the electric field is not passing through uh, the, the normal, we have an angle zero. Or if, if the electric field is not passing through the normal, we have an angle alpha. But if the electric field is passing along the normal, we have an angle. Uh, so yeah, which is what we have here. So that's why we have two uh, sort of expressions. So if your electric field is passing along the DS, you know that your angle will be zero because it's passing exactly along the DS. So your angle will be zero. So you know that EDS cos zero, cos zero is equals to one. So you just have EDS, which is what we have here. But if you have an angle, they've given you a certain angle between the uh, electric flux and the normal, which is uh, the D in the DS direction, we're going to have uh, your angle alpha, which is good. you're going to place there. So we, yeah, this is what we have. Is it clear or what? explain again? Yes, it is clear. Okay. Uh, I've got a question. Sure. Uh, what will cause the, the electric field, the direction of it to vary? To vary, because we, if we have a, a point charge, if we have a point charge, here Q, and then it's positive, Right, we have a positively charged particle. I said um, uh, a charged particle produces an electric field in all directions. This field produces a force that is either, di either directed away or towards the original particle. So this charged particle pro uh, uh, produces an electric field in all directions. So if it's a positively charged uh, particle, it will produce, be producing electric field in all directions outwards. 
So it will be producing electric field in all directions. Do you get what I'm saying? So here we have a charged particle. So we can have a shaft flowing through like this, in like this. We can have the electric field flowing through like this. We can have uh, the electric field flowing through like this along the surface. We can have it going through like this. It can be in, in all direction outwards. So yeah, so this is what we have. So if, if it's actually uh, flowing in this direction, this direction that I have here, we have a 90 degrees from the normal to the, we'll have a 90 degrees here. So you can replace here, because 90 degrees you have zero. So you won't have any flux uh, produced because um, EDS cos 90, cos 90 is equal to zero. So zero times this would be zero. So, but if you have it uh, flowing at an angle, if you consider the electric flux flowing through in this direction, you have an angle here, which is alpha from the normal to the uh, electric uh, vector, the electric, the sham vector. And then you have your angle, which you can place in this. But if your field is yeah, considered, you are given that your field is flowing through along the S, you have uh, your angle equals to zero and cos zero is equals to one. So you just have E times DS. Okay, clear? Yeah, it's clear. I see. So is it possible that the angle can go up to three skis? Uh, no, if we have a paper, sort of, a, okay, imagine we have a paper and then electric field lines are coming in from the other end of the paper to the other end. How can we have a 360 degree angle? We'll just have to the surface of the paper. You understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. If we have a paper and then electric field lines are coming in from the other direction, from the other side of the paper to through to the other side, we cannot have a 360 degree angle because we have a normal that is cutting. We established that we have a normal. So we'll only be considering the angles from the normal to the surface of the of whatever it is that we have. It can be a paper, it can be a bowl, or whatever surface that we have. Yeah, so we continue. I hope it's clear. Um, so yeah, which is what we have here. So flux, uh, do not forget what flux is. Flux is the rate of um, flow of electric field through a given area. So if we want to have a flux just on its own, we have we integrate uh, the change in flux. And then since we are, in, uh, we are integrating with respect to a given surface area, this is why we have indicated uh, two integrals, indicating that we are uh, integrating with respect to the surface area and then we'll have uh, this. So this will be our flux uh, equation, so to say. So uh, we move, um, uh, this uh, part is just a result de la definition de flux coulé flux due à un ensemble de champs à travers une surface et égal à la somme algébrique des flux uh, de O de V champ. En effet, si we have this, if we have uh, electric field, we have, uh, as we said in that, uh, in the other slide, we said this is the representation of some of some. So if we're trying to, if we're trying to find calculate the electric field of one uh, particle, one particle, so Q1, Q2, Q3, we add them together, we have uh, E is equals to E, uh, the, this symbol, the representation of uh, the sum uh, and E I. And then if we have to calculate the, sh the flux, uh, the flux, we, uh, if we have to calculate the flux of those charges, here uh, Q1, Q2, Q3, this, all of them together, we have this, what we have here, times ds. So, which is going to give us uh, this, uh, so it's, uh, is it associative? So we're going to have uh, the symbol for uh, the sum uh, times ei ds, which is just going to give us uh, flux uh, in the, with the I representing the number, maybe we have one, two, three, Q1, Q2, Q3. Yeah, so this is just this petty explanation. So we're going to have D, uh, change in flux is equals to E, I, D, S. So, so if we integrate, we have this, with I and yeah, there is. 
So we're going to move on to uh, flux to champ, create bounds, uh, charge punctual at travel on surface as non semi. So if we have a, a, a flux um, created by a charge, a point charge that is passing through a surface that is not closed, any surface that is not closed. So we have a closed, closed surface is like a sphere uh, in form of a ball, that's a closed surface. But if we have an open surface, so we are trying to calculate the flux uh, created by a point charge that is passing through a surface that is not closed. Um, uh, so on charge Q plus A at a point theta. So now uh, this is uh, the drawing that we have. So we have, um, so imagine uh, this is a horn, right? So imagine maybe I have a, what can I say? I have a, okay, now let me just not confuse. So imagine I have a corn and then we're trying to calculate uh, flux uh, passing through the surface of the corn. So we're trying to calculate this, the flux that's passing through the surface of this corn. So we've got a charge at uh, Q. We have a charge at Q. Uh, we have the charge Q at the point theta, that the labeled theta. And then we have our surface here. Let me draw this. So we have uh, our surface. Uh, this uh, guy here. Uh, yeah, so we have that surface. And then we're trying to calculate the, yeah, we're trying to calculate the flux passing through at the point P of this surface. So if we have a charge uh, at theta, we establish that uh, the, it's going to be moving in this direction, which is why we have the U. So we have, at, we're calculating it at this point. And then uh, what we have here, we establish, we make a cone, we establish it's a cone. So what we have here, the angle here, we're going to call it uh, the solid angle. It's called uh, a solid angle. So a solid angle is just uh, simply a 3D angle enclosed by a conical surface at the vertex and it's represented by omega. So a 3D angle enclosed by a conical surface at the vertex and uh, it's represented by omega, which is what we have here. So we have this uh, small and omega, which is a uh, change in omega, you want to call it. Then we have the same um, explication as I gave. So we have E moving uh, along, so we can have E moving in this direction, moving in that direction, in that direction, and then we have DS, which is always, um, acting as a normal to the surface of the element. So we have the char E, P is equals to, E is equals to one over, this is what we did. We have uh, electric field. The equation for electric field we have is, I'm sorry. So for electric field, our electric field we have E is equals to this. So for an open surface, we have electric field E is equals to this. And for uh, flux, we have Flux is equal to E dS. Well, we can, where there's E, we can replace with our E that we talked about earlier. So, yeah, where there's uh, our E, we replace with our E, which is this guy here. And then uh, where there is dS, we put dS. So, literally, we have this is our, our flux. So, flux at this point due to this charge at this point, we're going to have is this. So there's nothing complicated to do. We just got our E that we already discussed, our Sha. We placed uh, here the formula for the expression for Sha times ds, which is what we have there. So uh, yeah, so we're going to establish that. Um, sorry, so we're going to establish. So we're going to establish that uh, U ds over r squared is our solid angle. The solid angle that I talked about there, the omega. So it's gotten as a result of uh, the vector direction u times the ds over r squared. So angle uh, solid sous lequel le voie de theta la surface uh, ds. So we have our sha is equals to q 4p epsilon naught times dq. This is our, this guy, the omega, I mean, is just a representation of this. Is there is a result as a representation of this? So if you want to uh, know more about how and everything, I advise you to watch uh, some videos. I'll send for you some links. But 
the d omega is as a result of the vector direction u uh, times ds, the vector direction ds over r squared, which is the distance from the charge to the point where we're calculating the, uh, the charge, which is another this case p. Yeah, so we're going to have our flux is equals to uh, charge over 4p epsilon 0 dq at the surface. This is when we're trying to find, calculate the, the flux uh, for a surface that is not closed. So which is what we have here. So uh, for, uh, yeah, so this is our end result for us to find our actual flux. This is the, the flux. So for us to find uh, flux, we have to integrate, we already know. And so we're not forgetting that it's uh, with respect to the surface area. So we integrate twice and then our end result is just going to be this our constant times uh, omega, which is what we have here. We. So does that mean that uh, this whole procedure here will just to get us to the main formula? Which, which one is the main formula? No, you have to know the main formula for flux. For flux is E is equals to E dS. But you, it depends whether you're finding, you're trying to calculate the flux in an open surface or a closed surface. So right now we're just trying to calculate uh, the formula for, we're trying to get to how we calculate flux in an open surface, on an open surface. So as we have here, this is what uh, we have if we're trying to calculate flux on an open surface. So now we're going to go calculating flux on an open, on, in a closed uh, surface, so to say. Okay. Yeah, so which is what we have here. So I'd advise you to go through this and yeah, just petty a petty to you will get to know uh, them by heart. Yeah. Uh, I've got a concern. Sure, sure. Uh, is it possible that you can be giving us examples so that we can understand more better? Yeah, sure. We're going to uh, we're going to do an exercise. I th yeah, so to, at the end of today, just to help us with what we've covered. Is it okay? Exercise, not example. <laughs> oh, an example. You want an example for? Like the, most of the equations, like you haven't given us examples. Okay, uh, examples. Okay, for example, if we're trying to, is this the kind of example you mean? Like if I say, for example, if we're trying to calculate the, if we have a cone and then we're trying to calculate, uh, if we have a surface like this and then we're trying to calculate uh, the flux um, through this point produced by this charge here. Is that what you're trying to say or like actual examples? Yeah, actual examples, like the way questions come. Yeah, we're going to do it at the end, but we're, we're going to do it together. It's not something that I'm going to, so we're going to, there will be form of examples because we'll be answering them together. All right. We, so yeah, we've uh, talked about that. So now we're going to talk about uh, flux at traverse on surface Femi. So now we're going to talk about uh, um, flux through a closed surface. So for you to uh, calculate the flux uh, in of a closed surface, you have to use uh, the Gauss theorem, theorem de Gauss. So um, yeah, you have to use uh, theorem de Gauss. So Theorem de Gauss is uh, what we're going to talk about now. So le charge punctuel Q est placé à l'extérieur de est, considérant un coin élémenté de Okay, so I'm going to explain a few things to you. So for a closed surface, maybe like a sphere, if I have uh, a sphere, a shape or a bow, so to say, and then I have a charge, uh, inside in the uh, inside of of the bow we're going to establish that we're going to say we're going to i'm going to mention to you that the flux uh entering through the bow and the flux entering out of the bow is equals to zero so the net flux in a closed uh, uh 
uh, surface is equals to zero, which is uh, what uh, we were having here. So the, fl uh, the flux entering and the flux uh, coming out of the closed surface is equal to zero. The net charge, or the net uh, flux, is equal to zero. Uh, and uh, Can yeah. Can you please repeat uh, what you've just said? If I've got a closed surface, a sphere, so to say, right? I want you guys to know that the f the net flux going through that uh, uh, sphere is equal to zero. So meaning the flux entering in the surface. Oh, in the, in the sphere and coming out of the sphere is equals to zero. That's one thing you should know. Yeah, which is uh, what uh, we were explaining here. Uh, yeah, the, the net uh, flux is equals to zero. So the uh, the flux plus the flux Q is equals to zero. And then uh, what else do I want you guys to know? So. La charge uh, punctuate QA place a interior DS. So we are going to have uh, our drawing here. Our drawing here. Oh, yes. Uh, what, uh, something else I want you guys to know is that for a sphere, if we have a closed surface like a sphere, um, uh, the steridian is the SI unit of S, the solid angular measure so the solid uh, angle that i talked about so we have if we have a cone let me try to draw it so if we have uh, so, so if i have a cone okay so if i have a sphere um Try to draw. So if I have a sphere, uh, something like that, and then I uh, I get a part of it, which is uh, let me try to. So this is our center, our center O, and then I have uh, this. I've taken this uh, part of uh, the sphere. What I'm going to have, I'm going to have a cone. Sorry, is it okay if you can use another color? Okay, sure. Um, mm, where do they? I don't really think I know where they change the color from. Okay, let me just make it bold. Maybe you'll be able to see. Okay. Yeah. So, eraser. Okay, so if I have a sphere, so to say, I have a sphere, and then my center is uh, here. Here is uh, so my center of uh, my sphere is uh, there, uh, and I get uh, a part of uh, the sphere. I get I cut through uh, like this. So I'm going to have my solid angle, which we already talked about. And then uh, for a sphere, you have to know that for a sphere, uh, there are four pi uh, steridians in a complete sphere. So uh, the solid angle is measured by the uh, is measured by a, an SI unit called uh, steridians. So yeah, you have to know the sphere is measured uh, the SI units for solid for the solid angle. Uh, for a cone, for a sphere is uh, called steridian. And then for there are four pi steridians in a complete sphere. So if we have a complete surface, and then we have our, our, our formula for uh, flux is equals to uh, flux is equals to Q, this, uh, uh, this dq, we know what this comes from. So if we have uh, for what I'm saying is that for a sphere, there are four pi steridians in a complete sphere. So if there are four pi steri uh, steridians in the complete sphere, we're going to have, where there is uh, the omega here, we're going to replace with four pi. And then if I replace uh, where there is omega here with four, four pi, because we're finding flux in a closed cylinder and in a closed surface, which for in this instance, I've taken an example as a sphere. A sphere is a closed surface. And then I've mentioned that there are four pi steridians in a complete sphere. So if I have my formula uh, for uh, flux is equals to uh, flux is equals to Q over four 
pi uh, e naught uh, with uh, dq. If my dq is equals to four pi, this four pi that I've established here and this four pi will cancel. So I'll have my, um, my final, there's a way, I'll have my final, uh, my final uh, formula as flux is equals to Q over E in a closed uh, surface. So what I'm trying to say is that in a closed surface, for you to find the flux, you have to use theorem de Gauss. And theorem de Gauss uh, is uh, a theorem that helps us establish that um, flux is equals to charge over the permit. Uh, the E naught is uh, the permittivity of the surface. So we're going to have charge over permittivity of surface. So you won't need to know all this. You just need to know that uh, for a closed surface, you have to, for you to find flux, you have to use theorem de Gauss. And theorem de Gauss was gotten from uh, this whole explanation that I've given here from a sphere. So you know that the sphere, you have four pi steridians uh, for a complete sphere. So where there's uh, the omega, the angle solid replaced with four pi and then the four pi is going to cancel with this four pi so i'm just going to remain with charge over uh, epsilon naught and then this is our theorem de Gauss. so theorem de Gauss is equals to charge over the permittivity of the surface which is uh, represented as e naught in this space uh, are there any questions Uh, can you kind of explain what the the e like what does it mean? The e naught. This yeah. Guy, it's a permittivity of a surface. Permittivity enable the surface to allow the electric flux. So it's got the number. I think I I gave you in the notes. I gave you the the um the uh the what the what is equal to yeah so in this case we have charge over uh the permittivity of the substance which is epsilon zero this is our th this is our theorem de Gauss. so for a closed surface always know that if i don't calculate flux you're supposed to use theorem de Gauss, which is q over epsilon zero and then for an open uh, surface we use the same we use uh we use okay we use uh, this guy here which is what we have here yeah so um i will move um yeah so set relation rest valuable for the distribution continue can complete all interior ds so for a set of charges q1 q2 to qn additive the flux uh donate so for uh, charges Q1, Q2 up to Qn, adding them, the, fl the flux is going to be, flux is equals to one over epsilon, uh, the total of the charges, which is what we have here, which is the same as this, just that we have, we're not finding for one charge, we're finding for a total number of charges, uh, uh, charge punctual um, distinctly, which is what we have here. So that's in a closed surface. So if we have uh, in a sphere, we have Q1, Q2, Q3, and then we have to find the flux. This is what we use. So set uh, relation rest valid for the distribution continue Kelkong plus a a la interior the S so in the inside of the surface uh, when the charge is placed in the interior of the surface. So yeah, we go back to this. This was our indication for flux on the for a surface non fermi So we talk about theorem de Gauss now. So theorem de Gauss, a le flux to champ électrique, so tant to surface fermi s a égal le quotient par epsilon zero, which is what I'm from saying. So the same, the flux, uh, the flux, uh, electric flux of uh, coming out of a surface, of a closed surface s, is equal to the quotient, uh, is equal to uh, the quotient, the charge, sorry, the charge per epsilon zero. Sorry, there was a mistake here. The la sum algebraic the charge situated at the interior the S. So the surface S a appelle the surface the goes. So if I'm trying to, if I have, for instance, if I have, I'm given a sphere. Um, 
I'm given a sphere like what we have here, and then I'm told to calculate the uh, the amount the flux coming through at any point of uh, this surface here. So we're going to establish. We're going to know uh, that. Uh, this surface, we'll call it uh, surface to ghost. So we'll call this surface, surface to ghost, which is what they're trying to say here. So the surface S, so if that, that in, when you hear in your clue, surface to ghost, they're just trying to say the surface on which we're trying to find the flux, the closed surface on which we're trying to find the flux. So yeah, it's nothing complicated. So we have expression, look at the theorem, the ghost. Uh, uh, we have sat, uh, saw on surface Femme S and to run on distribution continued electric, electricity, the density rho, uh, and un point quelconque, soit V, le volume unit A. Uh, um, sorry. Sure. I had network problems, so I never got what you said during the theorem, the gas. So uh, uh, here, those, uh, I think I didn't really. Uh, right uh, proponents but uh here literally they're saying the theorem the ghost is equals to the flux to champ electric so uh, so so the flux of the electric flux coming out of a surface a closed surface is equals to the uh, charge uh, per epsilon zero of the sum algebraic the charge situated the interior the s so if we've got multiple charges we're going to have uh flux is equals to i1 over epsilon 0 times the uh, total uh, qi, which is like what we're just from discussing. So here, they're just trying to give you a, defin a definition. And then when you hear surface, the ghost simply are just trying to tell you the surface on which we're trying to uh, calculate uh, the flux. And then if you hear ghost, know that we're finding, some, we're finding flux on a closed surface. That's the only time where they have to use theorem the ghost. We so uh, we have expression look at this do theorem de Gauss. So we have uh, uh, soil on surface Femme S and Toran on distribution continue uh, the electricity, the density row, uh, and uh, on point quelconque soit V le volume unité par S uh, by definition the flux we have flux is equal to this. Mm, uh, D'après the theorem de Green. Uh, do Cho Gratsky. So the theorem the green Do Gratsky that's what we're having now is uh, small of like, okay, it's also called uh, flux divergence. So flux divergence is uh, flux density. It's like uh, divergence is uh, flux density, amount of flux entering or leaving a point. So divergence is uh, the amount of flux entering or leaving a point. So we have the theorem the green, uh, what this word is. Uh, which is also called flux, the theorem of flux. So um, this theorem states that, uh, uh, let me get my pointer. Mm, so this uh, theorem, this theorem states that um, le, flux, uh, le flux du champ vector so an un surface femme est égal à l'integral de sa divergence. So uh, uh, the flux to champ, so electric uh, field of a vector of a surface of a closed surface is equals to the integral of its divergence times the volume. So the divergence of, of the flux times the volume, the integral of the divergence of the flux times the volume is uh, what our theorem uh, green or Gratsky is, which is the same in other books that quite the flux divergence theorem. So this uh, guy is the same, or it's equals to our flux, or it's equals to us finding our, our flux here. So for us to try to uh, calculate flux, we have two, we can use uh, this method, or we can use the theorem, the uh, green Otto Gratsky, which is this, which talks about the divergence uh, flux. So we say that divergence is the flux density. So what is flux? This the amount of flux, flux entering or leaving a point, simply that. So we have the integral of the uh, flux uh, of the electric, the divergence of the electric field times the volume according to the area that we're finding. So the integral of that uh, is equals to the same as you just find in the 
uh, flux using E times ds uh, with respect to surface area for a closed surface. So they've introduced uh, a theorem, a new theorem, which is flux divergence or green Otto Otto Gradsky. And then uh Dotre uh, Pas, La Charge Total Continue à l'Interior de V. So as we talked about earlier, we have the charge total contained in the interior of uh, the volume, which is this, which is our formula for charge. So of Q is equal to integral of uh, V rho dV for a volume, uh, density volumic the charge, which is what we have uh, here. So we're going to have uh, the theorem de Gauss secret uh, donc. We have divergence of E is equals to, as I mentioned, we said, we agreed that, uh, sorry, we're going to move it up, okay. So we agreed that uh, divergence of this is equals to uh, E uh, integral, integral, integral of E, uh, E ds, it's a vector, ds, uh, yeah, we have that, and we have that. Yeah, so we established that this is equals to this, as I'm from mentioning in the, in the previous uh, yeah, slide. So we have this is equals to this because we established that this is equals to this. So where this is coming from is that we have uh, this is equals to uh, Q over epsilon zero, epsilon zero. You guys will get where this is coming from. And since now we're dealing with dq, we're dealing with uh, not if a not to one specific uh, point charge. It's a a t uh, charge. So we're going to have dq is equals to this is equals to uh, dq over epsilon zero. And then we've established that charge dq rho uh, is equals to uh, d um, dq over ds. This was one of our first expressions over ds. Mm. And then when I change the subject of formula here, I'm going to have uh, dq uh, dq is equal to like I'm cross multiplying, so I'm literally just cross multiplying. The Q is equals to rho or oh, dv. What? What? So it's going to be dv. I mean, sorry, dv over. Huh? No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Let's go back to our actual expressions. Oh, uh, so we said that in the volume uh, density the charge we discussed our what our charge is going to be equals to so let me just go to the notes before i say anything that is not correct so we have um, um Yeah, so we have this, our rho is equals to dq over dv. Yes, so we have our rho is equals to dq over dv. And then when we come to today's lesson, where are we? So we have our rho is equals to dq over dv. So if I make uh, d, dq my subject of the formula, sorry about that. Where was I? I think I was here. Yeah. So if I make uh, dq my subject of formula, so this is still dq. Yeah. So I have dq here. So I'm going to have 
still draw my Q. Mm, draw. I have the Q. Yes, so if I make the Q except the formula, the V, this was my mistake. So if I make the Q my substitute formula, I'm going to have the Q is equals to rho dv, which is what I've replaced by dq here. So where there's dq, they just put our rho dv, which is what we have here, which is what we have here. And then by integrating it uh, with respect to volume, which is why we have three uh, lines of integration. So uh, yeah. So we have. Can you, can you kindly repeat? Sorry, I didn't understand that part. What part? Can yeah, just the, the formula dq over dv. Now we had this. So I said, uh, I said that uh, from our previous uh, green, uh, the new formula that we have, the flux divergence. Let me use flux divergence. We have E s is equals to this. So in some cases, maybe you'd be given uh, the divergence of the flux. So you use, you know that this, this formula is equals to this formula. So we have the divergence of E uh, times dV is equals to E dS, uh, which is our established uh, flux formula, which is what we have here is equals to this. So having this, we now go to our second part, uh, our second part, which is this, the same, it's the same thing. So we have uh, divergence of E is equals to EDS, which I wrote here, which was just from establishing in the previous slide. The divergence of uh, E times dV is equals to this. So we discussed though that uh, this guy uh, in flux in a closed surface, when you're trying to find the flux in a closed surface, it's equals to uh, charge, it's equals to the charge over uh, the permittivity, which is epsilon naught, which is what we have. Yeah, here. So, mm, sorry. Yeah, which is what we have here. So, if I have that, I have that. So, I'm not, I'm not trying to find the, this is Q, as you can see. Now, I'm trying to find the flux of through uh, a charge DQ a small charge dq. So what do I do? So my formula is going to be EDS is equals to dq over epsilon zero. But I know I have expression and I have an expression for dq. Uh, I have an expression for dq in the form of uh, volume uh, charge. We have it again in uh, surface eq and we have it in linear eq. But this I'm dealing with uh, volume uh, through a, a certain amount of volume or certain volume, let me say a small petty volume, we're going to use our uh, ex our formula for a density charge uh, in a specified, through a specified volume, in a specified uh, volume, which we agreed was equals to rho is equals to uh, dq over dv. over dv. And if I make the q my subject of formula, I'm going to have rho dv, which is what I have here. So I, I will have rho dv here on top over dq. But since now, after this, I integrate, I try to find the actual flux, not the deflux. And so I try to find the actual flux, I have to integrate. So I'm showing that I'm integrating with respect to the volume. So this is why I have this. And this one epsilon is a constant, epsilon is a constant. So we're going to have one over epsilon zero, uh, integral uh, of rho dv with respect to v. Is that okay? All right, it's okay. Yeah, so uh, from there, uh, where uh, local ma, sorry, let me wrap this. Um, mm, Oui, so uh, where are lo local ma au point de, au point où la densité de charge is equal to rho. So now we're going to have our actual formula from what we have here, 
So let me just um, bring it back again. So we have, uh, we've established how uh, that is going to give us that. So if we integrate this, we're going to have a draw. So if I integrate this, I'm going to have uh, div, uh, uh, div E, uh, div E, uh, and since I've integrated this with respect to volume, I'm going to have volume. So because you know that the derivative of dV, the integration of dV, I mean, is V. So I'm going to have dV E for V eta gala one over epsilon zero rho times v, because we've integrated uh, the dv with respect to v. So yeah, which is what, what we're going to have here. So uh, which I can divide by v, I can divide by v. So the v and this v will go, this v and this v will go. So I'll just have a uh, div e is equals to rho over epsilon zero. So if I'm taught to find the divergence, this is the formula. So I have divergence e is equals to uh, rho so epsilon zero, which is what we have here. Uh, okay, on that point, uh, since we are finding the div the divisions, so does that mean that uh, in the first place we are integrating with respect to our volume? So can we say even the units after we find the divisions are supposed to be of that of volume or we are supposed to give each other units as well? Uh, I think since we're, uh, let me check the SI units, but since we're, respect, we're differentiating with respect to uh, volume, so we'll have, uh, I said that uh, here we have rho, so our rho, our rho, because it's a constant, and you say it's uh, as a result of uh, dv of, or dq over dv, yeah, it will have the units of volume and it will have the SI units for epsilon. All right, thank you. Yeah. So um, is everyone clear on that or I should repeat? Okay, so seems like no one has a question. So uh, uh, now we're going to try to do um, an exercise. So I just picked uh, uh, two exercises that we can do. So we are going to start with exercise two. Uh, the one that's showing exercise two. So I have exercise two. Mm -hmm. So exercise two says, uh, so on quiz spheric uniform the rayon R. Sorry, let's wrap this. We saw uh, mouse. So on quiz spheric uniform the rayon R potent the charge Q. So they've told you that uh, this uh, uh, kush here carries, uh, has a radius A, a rayon, the R, which is what they've shown here. Mm, sorry. Mm. Yes, yeah, so that uh, they've shown us that uh, this spheric, uh, the spheric shape has a radius a, which they've indicated here, and uh, and carries a charge q. So they've told you the Cush spheric uniform, the Ryan R uh, of radius r carries a charge q. So we're dealing with this figure here, this figure here. So we can see that this uh, uh, spheric uh, shape has got radius A, it's got the center, and then it's got charges outside of the sphere. So there are no charges inside, the charges outside. I've indicated that the charges are uniformly distributed, continuously distributed, distributed on the surface of the sphere outside of the sphere. So there's no charge inside, as you can clearly see. There's charge on the surface of the interior, of the, yeah, so they're saying in inutilizable in theorem de Gauss calculate E. So we haven't yet done V. We're going to do it, uh, I think, on Thursday. So so right now I'm just going to try and calculate the uh, sham, which is calculate E. 
à à l'intérieur et à l'extérieur de la sphère. So I'm trying to calculate the champ uh, in the at the on the, at the exterior and in the interior of this sphere that we have. So you can see this, this is trying to uh, tell us, uh, give us the uh, indication that uh, this, when we, okay, let me try to do it. Um, this in here, so in here, we have a radius of A, and this is our indication of the radius out, okay, not the radius, let me not collect the radius, because the radius is ends up to here. So if we have a charge, yeah, so maybe we're trying to find the uh, the uh, champ, as they've said, outside the surface of this sphere. This is what this arrow is trying to show us. So um, we're going to answer it together. Uh, yeah, so we're trying to utilize the theorem de Gauss, calculate E a la interior e a la exterior de la sphere. So how we go about this question is, uh, so I have a surface, I have that sphere that we had, that we have been given, um, desertly. So uh, I have, uh, I have the surface that I've been given, yeah. So we have a line interior in the, uh, in, inside the sphere, our radius, we've established that our radius is less than A. Our R, I mean, not radius. So our radius is equals to A, but if we want to find uh, uh, the field in the uh, sphere, in any part of the sphere inside the, uh, in any part of the sphere. So if we want to find the champ uh, at this point, at this point, at this point, we say in the interior, the R is less than A. So R is going to be our established, uh, um, so to say, uh, length of measure. So we've got, if we've got something like this, uh, let me draw it. So we have uh, maybe we're trying to find at this chart, at this uh, point here, uh, this is uh, uh, R inside the sphere. If we're trying to find uh, the flux outside the sphere, we have uh, our R outside uh, the sphere. So this is what uh, we have here indicating. So we have R less than A. For the interior, we have our R is less than A. For the exterior, our R is greater than the radius. So outside, the R is greater than the radius. Inside, the R is less than the radius. So we're going to first try to calculate the E Allah interior, so we have the R where the R is less than the A. Uh, yeah, so we're going to have um, flux. Our equation for flux is equals to uh, this is equals to E D S, uh, which is equals to Q interior over epsilon zero. So uh, this is our theorem de Gauss, as we earlier uh, stated which was gotten from this for a closed surface. So as we can see from our drawing here, our Q interior in the inside of this, of this sphere, we don't have any charge. There's zero charge, as I've indicated. So inside this sphere, there's zero charge. So what we're going to have is, uh, where there's a charge interior, Oh, yeah, the total net charge inside that closed surface, charge interior, we're going to have zero because the charges are outside. So Q interior is going to be equal to zero, meaning our flux is also, also going to be equal to zero. And our shunt is also going to be equal to zero because we're not going to be able to calculate our shunt. So our Q interior is equal to zero, our flux is equal to zero, and our E interior is equal to zero. So our electric uh, field is equal to zero because our Charges. We're trying to calculate the shunt inside the sphere. So inside the sphere, they've told us, as they've indicated in the diagram, there are no charges. So we cannot. We have zero here. Right here, we have um, zero. So if our charges are equal to zero, our flux will be going to be equal to zero, and our electric shunt is going to be equal to zero. So uh, we move on. Uh, sorry. Yeah. So is there a case where we can have like um, 
some charges inside and some charges outside? Uh, yeah, I'm sure you can, but uh, I think, yeah, I'm sure you can, but right now, uh, well, okay, for a sphere, yes, you can have charges inside and charges outside. I mean, anything is possible. But right now we're going to talk about, we're trying to find uh, the uh, shump inside a sphere and inside the sphere, we haven't been given any charge. The charge has been given outside the surface of this sphere. Uh, all right, thank you. Uh, okay, so we've uh, known where that is coming from. So our E interior, our shump interior is going to be equals to zero. And then our exterior, we have our R is greater than A. So uh, our R is greater than A. Uh, our R is greater than our radius, so outside the sphere. So we're going, what we're going to have is, we're trying to find the electric field outside the uh, sphere, the spherical uh, surface that we have. So R is greater than A, so we're going to have our, our formula for uh, Sha, we have our flux, where flux is equals to uh, this, which is equals to this, which established, this is a theorem that goes Q uh, in 10 over the, uh, uh, Epsilon zero. So uh, we have uh, uh, flux is equals to E dS. So we take our E the other direction. Uh, we bring our E the other direction, we're going to have dS this side. So if we integrate dS with respect to S, we're going to have S. So what's our, what's the surface area of this of the sphere? We get the surface area of a sphere uh, we know that the volume of a sphere, volume of a sphere is equals to uh, four, I'm sure most of us know this, four over three by um, R, which is the radius by R. This, this is the volume of a sphere. We did this in mass. So this is the volume of the sphere. So for you to have the surface area of, of uh, this sphere, we have to uh, integrate. So we integrate, we differentiate, I mean. So we differentiate the volume. So for us to have uh, surface area, we differentiate the volume. And if for us to differentiate dV, we're going to have differentiation, simple differentiation. So we're going to have our three drop and then uh, times uh, our four uh, by um, R, sorry for this, but R squared over three. And then we know that this three and this three will cancel. So we remain with uh, four by R squared. We, so we're going to have uh, our S here, we're going to have four by R squared because that's the surface area of the sphere. So we're going to have uh, four, our volume, what I was explaining, our volume is equals to four by, uh, four by R cubed. If we differentiate it, we're going to have our surface area, which is four by R squared in the direction the R. So if we put our four by R squared, where there's our S here, we put it here. Our E, we make our E the subdual formula. Our E is going to be equals to one over four by E naught Q over R squared. C'est clair, our champ. So we just make E the subdual formula. C'est clair but for everyone. You can just repeat one more time. Okay, so I'm trying to find the uh, field outside the surface of the sphere. So outside the surface of the sphere, that's why we've been given charges. You remember the drain has positive charges around the sphere. So the charges are not equal to zero. So we have charges outside this, uh, the, the sphere. So, because uh, the, the question told us to find the champ a la interior, a a la exterior de la sphere. So a la exterior, we have R is greater than A, which A is our radius. So obviously the R is going to be greater than A because we're finding outside the, the sphere. So we're going to have uh, flux is equals to EDS, which is our established uh, expression that we have. And then we know that for a closed surface, this is equals to this, which is our theorem de Gauss, right? So we're going to have uh, flux is equals to EDS, which is equals to Q 
over epsilon zero. Now, what will happen here is that since we have our integration, we simply integrate. So we take our E, our champ, the other direction, and then we integrate our ds with respect to s. So if we integrate ds, we're going to have s. So now we have E s is equals to q epsilon zero. So now what we're going to do is that what's our expression for s? Expression for s is surface area. What's the surface area of a sphere? A surface, a surface area for a sphere is four pi r squared which is got, is gotten from differentiating our volume. So if, we, if you know the volume for a sphere, volume is equals to four over three by R cubed. So if you integrate this, or if you differentiate, sorry, you're going to have this. So where there's S, you get your uh, expression for S, you put it where there's S, and then make E the subject of formula. And then you're going to have this and this. Uh, and that's our E. So that's our... Uh, the, that's how we calculate uh, SHA, which is what we have here. Are there any questions? So in the Allah interior, the SHA is equals to zero because there's no charge inside the charge. We found that the charge was equals to zero. Allah exterior, we found that our E is equals to one over four uh, uh, by epsilon zero Q R squared in the direction E R. Oh, now, now the direction E R uh, is the direction of the of the flux. So the direction E R is the direction of the flux. It's moving in the radius, in the radial uh, direction. So it's, uh, so this is, yeah, so it's, it, it can move like this. Sorry, let me draw. So we can have it in this direction. We can have it in this direction. You can have it in this direction. Yeah, but it's moving in a, the radius. We know that the radius is equal everywhere in a sphere. So we have the radius coming this side, the radius uh, along the radius. So it's moving in the direction ER, which is the direction of uh, the radius. And that's what we have there. Uh, yes, you And then question. I have a question. Sure. Um, so when it comes to the exterior in terms of exp uh, expressing the answer, mm -hmm. so there is supposed to be the direction like as in mandatory. Yeah, uh, electric field has direction. So you're supposed to indicate the direction. So for a sphere, you just in it's, it's in the radio direction, which is ER. Sphere. It's, yeah, you have to indicate, you have to include the direction. If you leave it just like this, it's not complete. And most professors, will, they will not mark it. So you have to indicate the direction. So, sorry. So basically, here I'm supposed to have E. Sorry. Here I'm supposed to have E like that. Ah, I see. So yeah. given the, the values of Q and R, I would have found uh, the exact uh, figure and the direction there, right? Yeah, but this is, okay, yeah, yeah, you can, you can find the exact thing, but this is the way they phrase their questions. Unless maybe it's a complete, and I don't know, maybe a complicated professor who maybe wants to add in figures but usually they'll just they'll calculate the SHA, they would calculate the, the Q. If they wanted, they would have told you maybe to calculate the Q. So you're supposed to know that literally just make Q the subject of formula and then you have the expression for Q. And then if you have your values, you plug in, plug in your values, but usually they don't um, uh, give us values, maybe in other filiers, but yeah. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. So we go to our, I hope it's clear for everyone. So we go to our second question, our second and last question, which is, sorry, uh, which is uh, question three. So the well, next time we're going to talk about the potential, which is a representation of V. So I just uh, fixed uh, the questions that we've, for what we've done. So we're going to have exercise three. 
So square on sphere S, the center O, the rayon R, the same thing. So we've got a uh, center O, radius A, uh, and the density volumic rho constant. So here they've given us the density volumic and they've given us the center. In the previous one, they gave us the charge and they gave us the radius. So you're supposed to sort of not as in not as in you're supposed to note down these things. The question, follow it closely and see what they've given you and try to move from there. So in this uh, exercise three, they've given us a sphere, center O radius A and density volumic uh, rho constant. So as you can see, they haven't given us the value of rho. I've just told us that rho is a constant. So we have in this uh, sphere, we have charges inside the sphere and then no charges outside the sphere. So this is like the opposite of this, but yeah. So uh, we try to find, so now uh, the same question. So oh, I didn't finish reading the question, sorry. So the same meme, meme question, uh, the same question as exercise two. So using the theorem, the goals calculate EAV al interior and al exterior de la sphere. So we're going to calculate the E al interior and la exterior de la uh, set sphere. So uh, we, so what we're going to have uh, is, um, so for, uh, which one is this? Also for, uh, don't mind this, this is the V. Sorry, I included it in the, in the, yeah, in the PDF. So we're going to have, go to exercise three. So we have exercise three. So we have our row. We've been given our row, which is a constant, the density volumic. So this is our sphere. We have charges. We have our A, and we have uh, that uh, R, the R outside the sphere. So we have uh, this. So we have been given our row. <coughs> Excuse me. Our row is equals to dQ over dV, and then for us to have the dQ, our dQ is equals to rho dV. So uh, having this, we can find the actual value of charge. So we've been given our row for us to find the actual value of charge. So dQ is equal to rho dV. So for us to have Q, we integrate. We know for us to have Q from dQ, we have to integrate. So we integrate uh, this guy. Same thing, we integrate uh, this guy three times. Yeah, you can indicate. Uh, yeah, so integrate this guy three times, which is what we have here. So Q will be equal to integral uh, of uh, this guy with respect to volume. And then we're going to have our row. Since our row is a constant, we can't integrate our row. So we push our row the other direction and then we're going to have uh, integral of dV. And then you know that when you integrate dV, you have V. V, V. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So if we integrate our dV, we're going to have a V. Mm. Yeah, which is what we have. Uh, okay. Which is what we have here. So we're going to have our Q is equals to rho times V. And then we know the volume of a sphere. The volume of a sphere is equals to four over three uh, by A squared. In this case, it's by R squared. In this case, the radius that told us it's A. So where there's R, you put A. Are we clear up to that part? Yes, we are. Yes. So, okay, so uh, we've been given a sphere. We've been told that the radius is uh, is A, is equals to A. Sorry. Uh, we've been told that the radius is equals to A. And then we've been given our, we've been told that uh, our rho, our density volumic is, is equals to constant. So you know the formula for density of volumic is rho is equals to dQ over TV. So if uh, I make the Q the subject of the formula, I'm going to have the Q is equals to rho dV. And then for me to have dQ, you know, uh, the, 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 yeah, the D, we have to integrate dQ. And if we integrate dQ, we're going to have Q is equals to the integral of rho dV. And then rho is a constant, so we can't integrate a constant. So we uh, place it the other side of the uh, integral. So we integrate dV. So if we integrate dV, we're going to have V, which is what we have here. So we have Q is equals to rho times V. And the volume of a sphere is four over three by A cubed, by, uh, by R cubed, I mean, but our radius 
where there's R here, we put A because our radius of a sphere we've been given is A, which is what we have here. So for this one, we established what Q is with the help of our, of our uh, density volumic. So we established what our Q is. So we have our Q is equals to rho 4 over 3 pi uh, or pi S cubed. That's our charge. So like the previous question, R greater than A. So if you talk about R greater than A, meaning you're talking about the uh, exterior, because R, if R is greater than A, A is our uh, radius. So we're talking about the uh, shamp outside uh, the, the sphere, so to say. Yeah, so I have this exterior. Just wants to indicate. It also that you don't get lost. Okay, so I have R is greater than A. I know that our A is our radius. So if R, we're looking for R greater than A, our R is uh, exterior. So we have our same our same uh, equation. So now we're trying to find the shamp uh, at the exterior de la sphere. So we have shamp is equals to this is equals to Q over int uh, epsilon zero. Now for this guy. Uh, uh, it's different. So if we have, uh, okay, let me just draw. So if we have our sphere, we've been given a sphere, we have uh, charges inside, uh, uniformly distributed, we have charges inside, and then we're told to calculate uh, the shunt outside. We've been given, uh, this is our center, maybe we're told to calculate the, the shunt at this point. So we're going to establish a Gauss, a Gauss surface. What I talked about, so we established a Gauss surface around it. Uh, sorry for the bad drawing. So we established a Gauss surface around it uh, in a circular form. Yeah, so meaning we're, we're still trying to find the shan uh, at this point produced by the particles in this sphere. So we have our formula here. We have our formula here, uh, flux is equals to E D S Q interior E epsilon. So uh, in with, okay, we have this surface. In this surface, what charges do we have? We have the same charges. Here there are no charges, but we have a sphere with the same uh, positive charges. So uh, we cannot establish that. Uh, there's zero charge because there's charge. We've established a, a surface and under that surface, what charges are there? They're still the same charges. So we're going to have the same uh, EDS is going to be equals to Q interior over epsilon zero. We have our Gauss uh, expression right there. And then uh, we're going to continue with our our calculation or our, yeah, our calculation, so to say. So we're going to have uh, flux is equals to E dS, E dS, and then we know that the surface of the sphere is equals to four pi r squared. So we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to uh, go E dS, we integrate uh, dS, we're going to have S, and then we know the, um, the surface area, the surface area of the sphere is equals to four pi r squared. So where there's, uh, the same thing where there's E, where there's S, we put uh, E and then E. Oh, where there's S, we put our value and then we have multiplied by E equals to Q over epsilon zero, which is it going to be equals to four. Uh, this, our surface is going to be uh, Q is equals to this over epsilon zero. Yes, so if we make, uh, make uh, E the subject of formula, we're going to have, uh, let me just try to draw this. We're going to have E, uh, E is equals to, uh, E times, uh, sorry. Okay. We're going to have our uh, E, Uh, four uh, pi r squared is equal to 
our q which is uh which was equals to rho which we found earlier rho times uh four over three pi oh my god okay pi i hope you can see that pi a squared the a was r cubed which we replaced by a because we know the our radius yes and uh yeah so if we make try to make uh our e the subject of formula so meaning we divide both sides by four pi r square four pi r square we're going to end up with this guy right here am i clear in the direction er am i clear Mm. So the answer that that you found it is the one for the interior. No, well, no, we're from talking about the exterior. The R is greater than A, so we're talking about the exterior. So this is why I drew my sphere right here. I drew my sphere here, and then I'm trying to find this line was uh, indicating. I'm trying to find this uh, the electric jump at this point. And now, uh, yeah. I get it now, I get it. Okay, yeah. So it, yeah, okay, yeah, that follows. Then this is uh, going to be my expression, r squared over the same, you do over the same thing. I think you guys can do the math from here. So yeah, we're going to have E is equals to uh, whatever divides here, which brings us down to our expression that I have written down there with the direction. Do not forget the direction. We so you know that this and this will cancel. This the pi and the pi will cancel. So you mean it's an expression that looks like so. Come so. We. So, uh, any more questions or we move? Okay, so we move. We just rub this. So yeah, we have that. We have that. Okay, so now we're trying to calculate a la interior. So now we're trying to calculate the champ a la interior de la surface or de la sphere. So we have our sphere and we have our radius. So uh, that's why I said R is not the radius because we can be finding it here at this point, and this point is not the radius because it's not, yeah, it's not the radius. It's not equals to A, the magnitude of A. So we have R is less than A, which is inside the sphere. So we have our flux is equals to E dS, which is equals to E S, and then we're going to have E S. You know where this is coming from? We replaced here with our formula the surface area is equals to Q interior E, and then we have our DQ is equals to this, which uh, we solved in the first plan. We've calculated our charge. So we already calculated our charge. Our charge was equals to this expression here. So if we have E, this is equals to our Q, which we replaced by this over epsilon zero. If we divide, we're going to have our shunt is equals to PR over three epsilon zero with the direction. So we're going to have E interior is equals to this, with R is less than A, and E uh, E exterior is equals to this with R greater than A. C'est clair. So that's how you go about the question of uh, Chant using uh, Gauss, uh, the theorem de Gauss. So you meet a lot of such questions of telling you to calculate the Chant, the, yeah, the, they give you the charge distribution, whether it's inside or outside the surface, Personally, I haven't uh, come across where they give you both inside and outside, but I'm sure it's possible. So, yeah, this is how you go about it. C'est clair. Oui, c'est clair. Okay. Um, so, I think I will end from here. So, next week we'll do a potential. And yeah, we'll move from there and maybe one or two exercises, inshallah. And then we will move from there. So um, have a blessed day and um, yeah, thanks for coming.
Can you send us this document? Um, sure, I will. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one more thing.